Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 65 of my modded Factoria playthrough. On this episode, we're going to tackle something that is probably the most complicated thing that we've tackled up until this point, and that is making a nice and compact blueprint for washing ores and preparing them for tier 2 sorting. Enjoy! So let's build some setups here. It'd probably be best to build these in clusters or nodes or however you want to look at it. Rather than building all of this connected together, we don't really know how big the setup's going to be, so let's build everything individually. So we should build the ore crusher setup first, and then the flotation cell. Then we can look at other things like uh, getting the hydro plants in there, getting the sorters in there, getting this in there, all that stuff. Uh, let's do the flotation cells first, since they're going to be much larger. They're probably going to dictate how big the setup has to be, just based on how much room the flotation cells take. Okay, so let's try that. So we're going to need 40 of them. And we're getting there. Let's stop the research to try to catch up on resources here. Oh, we're finally collecting sulfuric acid again. Yeah, just the four. Now we need somewhere random to build them. So how about right here? These things are pretty large, unfortunately. We'll just set that to sapphire. So we have a yellow belt going in, then a yellow belt going out, plus a belt in the middle for the geodes. Because this would be kind of copy this other way. The chunk stage is the most complicated. So we might as well get this out of the way. All right, well, let's copy it again. Might as well make this a repeatable pattern on all sides. These machines are pretty slow, so yellow inserters all around will do just fine. So the crushed input will go up there. And we will need some filter inserters. Because we want to try to make this nice and clean. So that'll be a near. And that's a regular. So let's get this set up. We want this to be sapphire chunks. And then we need to do the long handed right here. For the geodes. And what geode? drops from these guys. Blue. And I need some lights. And power. And power is kind of tricky because there's really not a lot of space in here. But we can make it work. Not much space for lights either. What about one over there and one over there? They're on the edge of the setup, which is uh, kind of annoying. 
because I want to be able to pack these as close together as possible. We'll worry about lights in a second. Because... I'm not sure exactly what shape we want this to be, but we need 40 of them. So let's see what four rows of 10 look like. We might want to change their shape, but for now, we'll give this a shot. I think this is pretty good. So we can take it and then lay it over right there. Save some pipes like before. I'll put an underground here just so we can walk underneath it if I have to. Now then, lights. So we can kind of put them right there. There we go. I think this is the full repeatable pattern, as far as I can tell. Okay, let's expand them. I mean, we, we have lots of shapes we can choose from. I guess a square would be the most efficient use of space. But let's try this for now. Okay, we've got a square here. We still got more machines, 16 of them. Okay, let's copy this over. To do so, we need to remove these pipes. And copy... All of that. The lamp is in the way. Okay, we have four more to place here. Well, let's just place this whole line. And fix it. Oops, didn't do the undergrounds. Or the power poles. I think that's most of it. That's close to a square rectangle-ish. But it does give us an idea of how big this would be. So this is one washing setup. We would need to have five more. So we can kind of figure out how big was this would be by putting those two belts right there making a blueprint, and then spacing them out. Now, they won't be able to be quite this close because they'll have to be belts going between the machines and whatnot, but this will give us an idea. So that's two, three, and six. So it would come out at least to here. And how big is that? Is that acceptable? I mean, technically, yes, but... That feels a little wide to me, because if it was out here, it might actually interfere with the rubite. <laughs> so let's change the shape. Something like this. So we'll copy this middle part. And then copy this last part right here. Okay. So are we pleased with that shape? I would say yes. We can get a lot more of those in a denser area. Okay, let's clean it up a bit. Probably don't need these middle lights here. And we don't need these connections on the bottom or the top. We'll probably have to place some of these back in in a second, but... Okay. But this isn't all of the setup. We need to process the wastewater and turn it back into purified water. I just realized I uh, forgot to do hydro plants. How easy would that be to do? So we can do hydro plant two, then hydro plant one. I think this will be a little more difficult because it requires iron pipes. But otherwise, it requires the same resources. 
I'll handcraft them for now. We don't need that many of them. So our setup requires five plants to process the sulfuric water. And then two more to add the purified water that was lost. This does require a ton of pipes, which is the annoying part about it. Like a ton of pipes. Hmm. Yeah, I don't want to be dealing with that. Like each one of them requires 48 pipes. That's going to be really annoying to handcraft. Okay, we're making them. We'll worry about pipes in a second here. But let's just add them to the end. So this is Hydro Plant 1 and Hydro Plant 2. Okay. And finally we just need to get a ton of pipes in here. Well we probably have no hope of ever making enough pipes. 15 pipes a second. But that's okay, we'll have a buffer here. Let's just set it up to be a thousand. And we'll just run the pipes down. These are fairly low value. So I don't think we need to do robots for these, since it's just one plate per pipe, so it's really no less efficient than just running resources around. Let's just run straight across. If we have to expand, that'll be kind of annoying. And we're running. And it'll stop very quickly. <laughs> because we'll be out of pipes. But it'll be a buffer and it'll eventually catch back up again. And there's our seven. We'll just let that keep on moving. Here's our setup. It is a little dark in the center of these here. So let's place some lights in here. So where to put all of this water processing? Well, let's figure out where these belts are going to go. So we have our three inputs. This will be the red belt. That's an input for all of this. And then that'll feed in there. Let's see, well, we will have a byproduct belt, and it'll be uh, half of a byproduct belt. And these should be red. Everything basically needs to be red. So that'll be the geodes going off to the side. And how many belts total of those geodes are there going to be? Uh, it's 7.5. So if we have six of these, that'll basically be two belts of geodes. So something like that. Just a pretty simple way to do balancing right there. Now I have these belts pointed to the right. Pointed to the left might work better. We might have to just move things around. We should be able to flip it relatively easily. But we're going to have six total belts. Something like that, and then we'll have to stitch them in as required. In fact, doing it like this might work better. I'm just using these as placeholders for now. Yeah, something like that. That's much simpler. So based on that, we have a lot of belts going on down here. So it probably makes more sense to do the water processing up here because it's a lot quieter. Okay. So we need to fit five hydro plants to handle the wastewater. 
I don't know if there's a really easy way to do this. Probably nothing that looks very clean. Well, actually, those five just barely fit in there, but they do. See, now, the reason why I want to uh, have all these things placed down here is because now we know exactly how wide this setup is. Now, these lights do stick out a bit, but we have an idea of exactly how much space we have to deal with. We might as well squish these in here as tight as they can go to give us as much space as possible. Okay, and... I believe it is sulfuric wastewater for sapphire. So now we need to hook up the wastewaters, which come in right there. And we have our regular water. And the mineralized water, which will just go uh, somewhere else, basically. Well, let's see. As far as fresh water is concerned, let's see. There's not a lot of space at the top to do it, but we do have extra space at the bottom. So we've got the water there, and then we can come all the way up here. And we can kind of pipe it in through the side there. Since everything else is moving to the right, I'll do to the right as well. But I am kind of worried that this is all going to need to move left, because if I am indeed going to place it in this area, then it's probably going to want to move left as opposed to right. So if it's moving left, we'll need to have these moving left as well. How much sulfur and whatnot are we going to produce? Well. Assuming all of these produce the same amount of 7.5, it means we'll need uh, two red belts worth. So it would be something like this. Hmm. Well, I guess if it was more square-like, then it would have extended up here to be longer, but this is still a better shape than the other one. Okay. And two hydro plants making more purified water. We can just put them right here on the edge. And this might be a good opportunity to use some tanks. Let's do an inline tank. We can put it right there. There's no good place to move it here because of this saline water location, so... Let's just do that. And then on the edge here, a simple top-up valve. That way, these will fill in the leftovers, but they won't clog the system. They will always leave space available for the sulfuric water to get processed. And then anything that uh, still can't be produced will be produced here to top off the tanks. Then we have our saline water. And let's use a clarifier because so far we haven't been using anywhere near all of our saline water. So we've been dumping it other places and let's dump it here too. Well, that should be pretty close to the setup, but we want to test it to make sure it works before we copy it and build it six times just to find out they all six have the same flaw. So we need to test this to make sure it works. But we're going to save that fun bit for the next episode. But don't get too exciting because it'll be as exciting as silence. <laughs> don't worry, the next episode is the last one without sound. We're almost there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.